you have a national curriculum for teaching for, for, for schools. Is there a national curriculum to do? We do not have a national curriculum. And that's why with, with the American Chemical Society, we have much more influence at the undergraduate level because we've got about 670 chemistry departments that are approved through ACS. We have no such power over <laughs> uh, primary and secondary. And so it's just we can provide guidance. And we've come out, we came out um, earlier this year with an updated version for the first time in like 28 years of guidelines for teaching high school chemistry. So we provide <laughs> guidance, we provide resources, but there's no national curriculum. And that makes it somewhat challenging. And then the, the, the craziness with the states, you know, so we've got 50 states, the District of Columbia. Some states, like Texas, have been increasing the amount of science that t students have to take before they graduate. So now in Texas, every high school student has to have four years of science. There are some states that require one or two years of science. That's awful. Um, and so that's a real challenge, because if they're going to take one science, you better believe it's not going to be chemistry. Yeah. Did you have a second question? No, I was thinking about the curriculum again. Like, do you actually promote, from, from your university, do you promote like other universities to, to adapt to your curriculum, or do you spread it? Going into politics too. No, we do. Um, you know, because we're the um, the National Chemical Society within the United States, we do promote it through. You know, we'll we'll do symposia and meetings um, with our textbooks. Of course, we have our publishers who are out there promoting them. We go to science teacher conventions to promote it that way. Um, so we can do that. But there are some politics involved. <laughs> there are always politics involved. <laughs> I realize you, you told us uh, we have here the background to build a uh, green uh, education uh, in the you know in a medium period of time. But uh, do you think that there is some short time period, so short impact uh, activities that we can perform right now to you know to, to make some waves and then to start a faster way? Oh yeah, I, I think the things that you can do sort of in the short term are those that are really involve your immediate sphere of influence. So in other words, the courses you teach where and hopefully you don't have to get permission from anybody else for what goes on in your classroom. But starting to introduce you know, some of those green chemistry examples and concepts into the courses you teach, into your research, um, encouraging your students uh, to go to conferences where they're going to learn about uh, green chemistry and sustainability. The things that are going to take longer is if, if you are talking about you know, a national curriculum. Um, to try to get multiple universities or agencies on board, that just takes a long time. I mean, when we started, so Ken, I mentioned Ken Doxey at Oregon. He's one of the pioneers in green chemistry education. And he said, you know, back when this all started, he said, oh, we're still talking about green chemistry um, in 15 years or 20 years. He's, uh, and it's not the way the chemistry's all done by then. We're in trouble. Well, well guess what? <laughs> it's been 15 or 20 years. <laughs> it, it, just, it takes a very long time for these changes to take place. And in part, you know, if you look at the science itself, there are not always good substitutions you know, greener options. And so developing what some people call, refer to as a toolbox of green chemistry technologies, that's something that's also going to take time. So I'd say it's, it's often better, you know, they, they talk about sort of um, a acting locally and thinking globally. I think that's the approach you need to take. You know, st start in your uh, immediate, your university, your classes, your research, but then begin working with others so that you can expand that network and that impact more broadly across Brazil and the world. Mary, uh, all students of mine is interested maybe next year to go to the uh, green school. I think it's summer school. Yes, it's a summer school. Oh, our summer. <laughs> <laughs> Your winter. <laughs> No, I mean, that, that's also another way to have students who can come to the, to the summer school. Um, that has been one of the things we found after the first five years, we did a survey of the students who had participated in, in the first five years of the summer school. And um, most of them were still in contact with at least one person from the summer school. 
somewhere in contact with between 10 and 20 people from the summer school still. And um, we've had three marriages come out of the summer school. Uh, <laughs> there are many forms of chemistry that take place during the summer school. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not saying you'll come to the summer school and find your future spouse, but you never know. <laughs> uh, one, once I send you the flyer, so the application involves um, sending in your, your resume or your CV, um, sending in um, a personal statement about why you want to come to the summer school and what you hope to get out of it. Uh, there has to be a letter of reference from, your, from a faculty member. It doesn't have to be the advisor, but we need from a faculty member. And then finally, um, uh, an unofficial transcript of the graduate courses that, that you've taken. Um, the things, and I'll, I'll tell you honestly, the things that are most important is that personal statement and the letter of recommendation. Because that, that really gives me a sense of who you are and, and why you want to be at the summer school. And we get typically about 100 applications for about uh, 50 to 60 slots. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, yeah, it's reasonably competitive, but uh, it's always a good group of students, so it's fun. So next year? Yes, next year. Next year. <laughs> and all of your expenses are paid for this, by the way. The grant that we have covers everything, you know, for you to fly to the U.S., your housing, your meals, and it's a good deal. <laughs> So, I think it's a very smart uh, idea to go there and to exchange this kind of experience. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. You'll meet a lot of. Uh, one of the powerful things about it is the students who tend to come. Uh, are very passionate about uh, environmental issues. And so there's just a lot of really good interactions. And one of the, the first year we held it in Montevideo, uh, one of the students said to me, and only a chemist could say this, how did you find us? We're all so missable. <laughs> missable, what a beautiful word. But yes, everyone was very missable. <laughs> only a chemist, yes. <laughs> Is it necessary to